In 1859, a massive solar storm hit the Earth, turning the night sky into an eerily beautiful version of daytime. But the storm also caused significant damage to Earth's primitive communication system of the time, the telegraph system. If such a powerful magnetic wave were to hit the Earth today, our highly sensitive communication systems would crash and burn. A new study now says the global internet would be the hardest to fix and could be knocked out for months on end. Here are the details. Wired Magazine reports that a new study shows that the internet could be knocked out for many months if a massive solar storm hits the planet again, like it did in 1859 and 1921. Researchers looked at the infrastructure required to keep the world's internet running and found that undersea internet cables would be most at risk, while the optical fibers inside these cables can't be damaged by magnetized solar particles, their electronic repeaters can get permanently fried. These electrical devices are placed between 50 and 150 kilometers apart, and they have the very important function of boosting the signal before it fades inside the cables. The study found that while regional internet grids could be fixed quickly, international internet connections could be knocked out for weeks because it would take a long time to replace hundreds of repeaters situated at the bottom of the ocean. The study was done by assistant professor Sangeetha Abdu Jyothi from the University of California, who said the issue needs to be studied more deeply, as little is known about how solar storms would affect power systems under the ocean. Abdu Jyothi added that the undersea cables near the Earth's poles would be affected more severely by solar storms, while cables near the equator would be less affected. Because of political conflicts in the Middle East, almost all of the internet traffic between Europe and India currently goes through the region's one relatively neutral country, Egypt. Google, which is competing with Facebook to build high-speed cable networks worldwide, wants to change this dependence on Egypt by running its planned Europe-to-India cable over Israel and Saudi Arabia. According to the Wall Street Journal, Google's planned cable would for the first time connect through these two historical enemies, Saudi Arabia and Israel. The journal says the breakthrough project follows deals orchestrated by the Trump administration that have created new diplomatic relationships between Gulf Arab states and Israel. The journal reports that analysts say the Egyptian government charges telecom operators some of the heaviest fees to traverse its land and waters, which can add up to 50% of the cost of a route from Europe to India. Expanded connectivity between Europe and India would also help Google roll out data centers globally. The consolation prize for most people as we've experienced the apocalyptic events of the past year or so has been simple. At least we've got the internet. Good old trusty internet. Whatever's going on outside, you can bury your head in Reddit or Twitter or Tomo News and pretend all's well. Except on Tuesday. That bubble of calm was pierced when a load of the largest websites in the world all simultaneously went down. Apparently, nothing is sacred. Here's what you need to know. Thousands of websites, including Reddit, Amazon, PayPal, Spotify, and the British government's official site, went down across the world on Tuesday, after content delivery network provider Fastly suffered a disruption, according to a Reuters report. Over 45 minutes, users trying to access many high-traffic sites received an error message, according to The Guardian, though users in some places reported no problems throughout the outage. Content delivery networks are the internet's middlemen. Instead of visitors to a website having to connect directly to servers run by that company, which might be far away, companies like Fastly run server farms around the globe that carry copies of websites, thus speeding up the connection process. Of course, if one of those content delivery networks goes down, then you have what is technically called the absolute nightmare scenario of having no access to the group of websites they provide access to. And this is more important than simply restricting our access on Reddit. Media measurement firm Kantar calculated that, worldwide, websites lost more than $29 million in ad revenue per hour during the outage, according to Reuters. What's more, The Guardian reports users in the UK who were denied access to the British government's website were unable to use important services, including making COVID-19 vaccination bookings. The outage highlights a vulnerability in the increasingly centralized structure of internet provider infrastructure. According to The Guardian, only a small number of content delivery networks serve the entire world, with each one running huge numbers of websites. Outages are rare, but when they occur, even websites like the British government's, which can run on a backup network, need time to switch over manually. Faster internet than ever before has just arrived. Here's what you need to know. 
The world record for internet speed has been broken by engineers at Japan's National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, according to a press release by the institute. The engineers demonstrated a data transmission rate of 319 terabits per second using optical fibers running over 3,000 kilometers or 1,864 miles. Those speeds are almost twice the previous record, set just a year ago, according to New Atlas. According to Science Alert, the system works by transmitting data using technology called wavelength division multiplexing. First, light signals are beamed from a laser that splits them into 552 channels. These signals are then sent down the four optical fiber cores, where the previous record used three. As the signals travel through these cores, at intervals of 70 kilometers or 43.5 miles, amplifiers doped with the rare earth elements thulium and erbium reduce transmission loss. Signals are sent then into another segment of optical fiber before the entire process repeats itself. The four optical fiber cores are the same diameter as a conventional single core fiber, including the protective cladding around it, which means the new method could easily be compatible with existing infrastructure, though the press release did not outline a timeline for any consumer application. Next steps that were for the project include continuing to develop wide-band, long-distance transmission systems and exploring further methods of increasing the transmission capacity of low-core count multi-core fibers and other novel space division multiplexing fibers. Additionally, the engineers say they will work to increase the transmission range of the technology to transoceanic distances. It may be a while then before we see the impact of this technology directly, but when we do, its impact could be massive. The BBC reported that a previous record set by Australian engineers last year, which reached 44.2 terabits per second, was able to download more than 1,000 HD movies in under a second. At over seven times the power of that effort, this Japanese engineering team could be about to watch a lot of low-quality Netflix filler. Technology site Interesting Engineering summed up the potential of the new technology. We're nearing an age where the internet of the 20-teens and early 2020s will look barbaric by comparison. In terms of signal speed and data transfer, it's an exciting time to be alive. That last part might be a little bit over the top, guys, but you get the general idea. They're excited. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.